there are two simple standards that we're going to discuss from here. First one being Indes 8. Indes 8 discusses about accounting policies, accounting errors and accounting estimates. What are these accounting policies? What are these estimates and what are these errors? Now, first thing when I talk about a policy, a policy is basically like you're valuing inventory on a FIFO basis. It's an accounting policy for us. You can also adopt a weighted average basis for valuation of inventory. So selection between FIFO or weighted average is an accounting policy of the enterprise. What is an accounting estimate? If you remember in day 16, there were three determinants of depreciation that we have considered. Cost, estimated residual value, estimated useful life. So these are estimates which you prepare or which you make in preparation of financial statements. When I have a provision as per India 37, there should be a reliable estimate of the provision being made. So even there we have, we have come across the word estimate. Who makes an estimate? It is a management which makes an estimate. So sometimes the estimate which the management already made might have a certain change. Why? Why could there be a change? Because circumstances change, situations change. It made me there is it made me believe that there's a change in the in the estimate. Let's say, for example, I believe that my bad debts could average about 5% of my total debtors. Okay, it could average about 5% of my total debtors. But there was a COVID crisis which came in and which made sure that the my bad debts are not 5% but could be estimated at about 11%. So what happened? The estimate which was earlier made at 5% has now become 11%. So these are change in accounting estimates. Then what are errors? Errors is a mistake that we have done in the previous set of financial statements. For example, there was a cost which was incurred towards construction of a particular, uh, you know, building. But unfortunately, by not considering that as a building cost, I might have actually treated it in the PNL or I have debited it to the PNL instead of capitalizing the cost which is an evident error. Instead of capitalizing the cost, you have basically made a principal error of treating it as a revenue expenditure. So which is also resulting in certain errors. So rectification of these errors should also be handled in some standard. That is where Indes 8 comes into picture. Remember guys, Indes 8 picks up a very, 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 very critical concept of presenting three balance sheets. There are certain instances where we require to present three balance sheets or basically there are two instances where we present three, uh, three balance sheets. Now, what are those instances? Why do they emerge? And what are these three balance sheets that we have to present? That is our concept of discussion as we progress into Indies 8. Let's see what Indies 8 talks about. Indies 8 talks about accounting policies, their change in accounting, uh, their change in accounting estimates and change in, uh, sorry, change in accounting policies, estimates and errors. What is an accounting policy fundamental? Accounting policy is set of accounting principle, basis, conventions, rules and practices which are adopted in preparation and presentation of financial statements. If you remember, AS1 also had a similar definition of accounting policies. They are set of accounting principles which are applied in preparation and presentation of financial statements. Similarly, even your Indies 8 is coming out with a definition saying that accounting policies are set of accounting policy, uh, sorry, accounting policies are accounting principles, basis, conventions, rules and practices which are adopted in preparation and presentation of financial statements. Who has to select an accounting policy? Accounting policy selection is the responsibility of the management. The management chooses or selects which one is a more appropriate policy than the other. Okay, for example, my value of inventories is significantly changing in the past. Let's say petroleum prices. There is a significant change in petrol and diesel prices over the past. And such kind of value of property, uh, petrol or diesel is in my inventory. In such cases, the accounting policy of the company, the management should decide to be FIFO basis. My inventory should be valued on FIFO basis because the latest value of inventory should be actually represented as an asset so that you don't have an averaging of cost. So selection of accounting policies is a responsibility or vested with the management. Clear? Now, management can select whatever they want. No, the management should select accounting policy in such a way that 
the financial statements presented by adopting these accounting policies present a true and fair view of the financial position and performance of the enterprise. I'm saying yes, management can select, but the management select selection should be based on the fact that the financial statement should present a true and fair view of the financial position and performance of the enterprise. Remember, so while selecting management, uh, the accounting policy, the management should believe that selection of a certain accounting policy will give you a better presentation to the financial statements based on which they have to select the accounting policy. Clear? Now, as we progress from here on, what are the factors that should be considered in selection of accounting policies? Like I told you, the prima facie criteria is to present the financial statements with true and fair view. But the factors which the management should consider while selecting the accounting policy is to make the financial statements more reliable and relevant. So whenever I select an accounting policy, such selection of accounting policy should have underlying objective of making my financial statements reliable and relevant. When do you say a financial statements are presenting information which is reliable? If the source of information which is utilized in presentation of financial statements, they faithfully represent the financial performance and the position of the enterprise. That means the source of information which I have considered, it faithfully represents the financial position and performance of the enterprise. Like I told you, the inventory valuation. If the inventory value is changing significantly, then it is always better to go with FIFO basis because FIFO gives you a better valuation of inventory under changing valuation terms. In such a case, they have to make sure that I'm presenting faithfully the financial position and financial performance only if the inventory is valued on FIFO basis. That is to make the financial statements more reliable. What do you mean by relevant? It is relevant to the user to make economic decisions based on the financial uh, statements drafted. Information presented in the financial statements is helping the user in economic decision making. Then you can say that these financial statements are relevant. Guys, timeliness of the information is very important to determine relevance because if I have a certain disclosure being made in the current financial year, which belongs to three years before, it is not going to be relevant because the time has already elapsed. That is the reason why relevance has to be understood in the sense that the information presented is timely in nature. That's why if you remember in days 10, when we talk about events occurring after balance sheet day, even non-existing items, if they are material, they should be disclosed. Why are you disclosing? I am disclosing such events, even though they are non-adjusting because they are material, because they make the financial statements more relevant for the user to take appropriate decisions on. Clear? So whenever I select accounting policies, my underlying principle for the management is to present financial statements with a true and fair view to make sure that those financial statements are reliable and relevant. When do I say in the financial statements are reliable? If they use information which faithfully represents the financial performance and position. When do you say that they are relevant? Then the information presented in the financial statements is helping the user in making economic decisions. What about a change in an estimate? A change in estimate is possible because let's say when I start my CA final preparation, I pass my CA inter, I'm sitting down with CA final preparation. I'll say, see, inter went off somehow, somehow I passed it, but CA final focus will be different. So let us look at 60, 60, 60, 60 in all eight subjects. First subject, that is my first estimate. Okay. First subject, my preparation started. I understood that the first subject words tend to be a little more easier than I thought. I thought why 60? I think I can score a 70 here. Change in estimate. Second subject came in. Third subject came in. Your auditing subject came in. Auditing subject I started reading. I felt every paragraph is the same. I am talking about my situation. Okay. I am not generalizing. Okay. There might be an auditing faculty who might be very offended with what I say. But I felt more or less all the paragraphs were doing, talking about the same thing. Substantive and uh, compliance procedures true and fair view. So everything was almost looking the same. So I said 60 is not possible here. Let us target 45. 40 is too, too much of a margin. Okay. 
So 45 is fine. So what happened? Again, there's a change in accounting estimate. I went and wrote the exam, estimate changed. When I actually got the result, estimate changed. So whenever this happens, estimates are changing based on time, based on situation. Because estimates always require a degree of judgment by the management. So in preparation of financial statements, there are a lot of accounting estimates which are applied. An estimate in provision for bad debt, an estimation, estimation and provision for taxation, an estimate for identifying the present value of defined benefit obligation under India S-90, an estimation regarding estimated residual value, an estimate regarding estimated cost of dismantling, an estimate regarding estimated useful life. So, so many estimates have, have kept on coming. Every estimate, the management applied certain judgment. A management has applied certain judgment. Every judgment I make, today there is a match between India and Pakistan, let's say. I make an estimate that India is going to win this match by, by changing the match by at least six, six wickets. Now, in making this estimate, I have certain assumptions. Assuming that Pakistan is not going to put up a very big total. The judgment which I made was, the judgment was based on the fact that I find that the, in the recent past, the performance of India was much better than the performance of Pakistan. Therefore, there are certain judgments which I am making based on certain assumption. So therefore, whenever an estimate is made, it requires certain judgments based on certain assumptions. Such assumptions and such judgments based on which a management estimate is valued should be disclosed in your notes to accounts. Accounting estimate uses a degree of management judgment and the assumptions made in arriving at those estimates should be disclosed in my notes to accounts. Can the estimate change? Yes. If the estimate is changed and it affects only the current year, then you simply recognize in the p &L. But if the estimate is changing, even the estimates made in the present presented in the previous financial statements, I will not restate the previous financial statements. A change in accounting estimate should only be given a prospective effect. So from the date of change in estimate, I will only look at the subsequent form. Under India 16, one question which we have seen was a change in the estimate regarding dismantling cost. Whenever there was a change in estimate of dismantling cost, I never change the previous year depreciation. I never change the previous year provision. From the date of the change, I will recalculate the present value of the decommissioning cost and I will incorporate it into the cost of the asset in such a way that my subsequent period finance cost on the provision and also my subsequent period depreciation changes. So to the extent it affects the previous period, I will not make any restatement. I will, I will only apply the effect of the change in estimate on a prospective basis from the date of change. But to the extent they affect the future periods, yes, it affects the future period. I'll have to disclose it in my notes to accounts. Clear? Now comes the most important part. This is where I have a lot of discussion because we come across a concept of retrospective restatement here. So we talk about change in accounting policy. Guys, accounting policy should be consistently applied over various accounting periods. However, though you have a consistency principle, there can be a change in accounting policy. What are the reasons for the change in accounting policy? A change in accounting policy can arise due to two reasons. One, the change is required by the Indias. Earlier, I was adopting India 17 for leases. But now, India 17 is replaced with India 116. Automatically, I'll have to change the accounting policy for recognition of leases where India 116 have to be incorporated, where I start recognizing ROUSA. So, all these changes have to be made with respect to the change in India S. That is the first reason for change in accounting policy. Second reason for change in accounting policy is where the management believes that a change in accounting policy will give me a better presentation of financial statements, making my financial statements more reliable and relevant. What is this? Until last year, my oil prices, petrol and diesel were not changing so significantly. They have always been traded between 70 to 75 rupees. 
so i adopted weighted average cost model but due to covid or subsequent to, due to financial def fiscal deficit that we are suffering in india the taxes on this particular diesel and petrol prices have gone up and since the barrel rate of oil is also going up in the open market there is a significant change in the petrol and diesel prices because governments are not ready to cut down on the taxes why because fiscal deficit the total revenue of india is 22000 crores sorry 22 lakh crores 22 lakh crores is the total revenue of india but the budget projects an expenditure of 35 lakh crores that means there is a deficit of 13 lakh crores now where will they finance the 13 lakh crores out of they'll have to finance it out of disinvestment policies or by raising taxes so that is exactly what is happening i'm not supporting any particular thing but i'm saying that is how the dynamics of finance actually work let's say my financial commitment is 1 lakh per month but i have only a salary of 65000 per month then this 35000 has to be financed out of something what do i do take a loan right or do something else do an additional activity or i work two shifts a day or i work on a part time basis somewhere so something has to be done to increase the revenues of your personal growth same thing with the company with the government as well so my petroleum and diesel prices started growing and they became so badly that they, today they are almost touching 90 to 100 rupees so what happened i instead of adopting a weighted average cost i felt it was more appropriate for today's day to appropriate a fifo to identify a fifo basis for valuation of inventory so there is a change in the value of inventory there is a change in the accounting policy why did you change because i believe the management believe that a change in accounting policy is going to give a better presentation to my financial statements it is going to make my financial statements more reliable and more relevant so this is the second reason first reason i have nothing to do with it india has changed so i change statute change so i change number two i change because i feel that this change will make my financial statements more reliable and more relevant will give a better presentation to my financial statements these are the two reasons why I can change an accounting policy. When what happens when I change an accounting policy? Accounting estimate, very simply you said, always apply it on a prospective basis. So no effect on the previous period. Current year changes, you are recognized in p &L. Future period changes, you disclose in notes to accounts. Simple, over. But when I talk about change in accounting policy, it will have a significant impact. If the first reason is a reason for your change in accounting policy. That means there is a change in the statute or there is a change in the another index. Then in such cases, I will apply something called as transitional provisions. You remember in days when Companies Act 2013 was bought in, Schedule 2 came in in 2014 onwards. Due to change in Schedule 2 depreciation, the change that there was a significant difference in the carrying value of assets of each enterprise because of which the Companies Act has come out with some transitional provisions attached to Schedule 2. If you remember recently when India's 116 came in for leases, then also he has proposed some transitional effect starting from 1st of April 2019. So these transitional changes are necessary, are necessarily stated within the India's or the statute itself. So whenever there's a change in accounting policy, Pursuant to a change in the statute or pursuant to a change in index, then the change in India uh, accounting policy should be given effect to with respect to the, uh, the uh, provisions of that particular standard. These are called as transitional provisions. Clear? Every new standard comes in, it will always propose some transitional effects. So those transitional effects should be complied with. Most important is the second part. When you changed an accounting policy, because the management was of a view that a change in accounting policy gives a better presentation to the financial statements. In that situation, there is a significant amount of discussion that has to go in. First change, I simply said, whenever there's a change as per the statute, then apply transitional provisions as, apply, as given by the statute or the index. But it is due to a change in the opinion of the management that the change in accounting policy gives a better presentation and makes the financial statements more reliable and more relevant. 
in such case there has to be a retrospective application what do you mean by retrospective application retrospective application means apply the change in accounting policy from the date on which the transaction first occurred to the enterprise apply the change in accounting policy as on the date on which the transaction first occurred to the enterprise inventory valuation policy you changed so you have to change the accounting policy from the date on which first transaction regarding inventory has occurred first time when you issued inventory for production so 35 year old enterprise my first inventory issued was 35 years back from then fifo 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 i followed now i following weighted average suddenly a change in accounting policy you are asking me to give an effect of this change from 35 years back is it possible is it practical retrospective application should be given for the change in accounting policy from the date on which the transaction first occurred to the enterprise this has a lot of impracticality if it occurred only one year back or two years back it is fine but the organization has a history of 50 to 60 years and the first transaction of similar nature occurred 60 years back from where will i give such change it is impractical that is why he says apply the change from the beginning of earliest period reported apply the change of accounting policy retrospectively but not from the first date on which the transaction has occurred but from the date on which uh, uh, from the date of beginning of the earliest period reported let's understand what this is let's say for example my enterprise X Limited was established in 2010. Okay. I had an inventory valuation which was on FIFO basis. which was effective from 2010 itself okay FIFO basis you have been followed now let's say this was 2010 okay this is 1st of April 2020 financial statements ending on 31st of March 2021 somewhere around here during this financial year my inventory valuation has changed inventory valuation at weighted average cost wac i've changed from fifo to weighted average cost so what is the provision saying since you have changed to weighted average cost based on the management's contention that it gives a better presentation to my financial statements making my financial statements more reliable and more relevant i'll have to apply this change with respect to 2020 with respect to 2020 on the date on which the transaction first occurred date on which the transaction first occurred this is called as retrospective application retrospective application of change in accounting policy but he is saying if this is impractical if impractical then instead of doing this 
I can give an effect to from the date of from the beginning of the earliest period report. What is the beginning of earliest period report in current year is 1920. Previous year earliest period reported starting from 1st April 2019 ending on 31st March 2020 always presented on a comparative basis. So earliest period reported is 1920 beginning of earliest period reported from the beginning of earliest period reported when if it is impractical to apply the retrospective application of the change in accounting policy from the date on which the transaction first occurred. In such case, I will change or I will give an effect to such change in accounting policy from the date of the uh, from the beginning of the report, the earliest reporting period that is 1st April 2019. Clear? In this case, The effect of change as on 1st April 2000, effect of change, first one, as on 1st April 2019, effect of change in the financial year 2019-20, and effect of change in financial year 2020-21. Whenever there is an effect of change as on 1st April 2019, whenever there is a change with respect to 1st April 2019, in such cases, the effect of change on 1st April 2019 should be recognized in retained earnings. Recognized in retained earnings whatever effect happened due to restatement of 1920 we'll have to restate the financial statements of 1920. Similarly, I will restate financial statements even for the financial year 2020-20. In this case, my P&L or cash flow statement or statement of changes in equity, these on a comparative basis should be current year versus previous year, where I will compare 2020-21 to the restated previous year 2019-20. I will compare it with the restated previous year 1920. But when I talk about the balance sheet, this is where the most important logic lies. balance sheet when I have instead of presenting only two balance sheet dates as comparatives where I'll compare 31st March 2021 compared with 31st March 2020 here I will add one more which is 1st April 2019 that is the beginning of previous year in which the change in accounting policy was given effect to if this is my current year and this is my restated previous year which is compared with then I'll have to give an effect or even to or I have to present even the beginning of financial year the date of retrospective application the date on which the change in accounting policy was retrospectively applied the date at the beginning of the earliest period at the beginning of earliest period reported that is 1920s beginning date 1st April 2019. So in this case I'll have to present not just two columns in the balance sheet 
I'll have to present the third column in the balance sheet as well. Let's look at what the PDF says. Change in accounting policy for the year 2018-19 has to be given effect from 1st April 2017. Assume that such a change has occurred at the beginning of earliest period reported. Guys, remember this language you will come across even under India's 33 when we talk about shares issued for nil consideration where there is a change in number of shares without commensurate change in enterprise resources. Remember the language would be the same. Application 1st April 2017 that is the beginning of the previous period, pre previous financial year. Cumulative effect up to 1st April should be recognized in retained earnings. 2017-18 the previous year should be restated to ensure comparison with the current year 2018-19. So in comparatives current year of 2018-19 should be compared with the restated previous year of 2017-18 and the date of transition should be the extra column which is applied that is a date on which we gave a retrospective application to the change in accounting policy. Clear? So what are we saying? We said we can change an accounting policy. Those accounting policies should be consistently applied over various accounting periods. But the reason for change in accounting policy can only be due to two reasons. One, there's a change in the statute of the Indies or the management is of an opinion that a change in accounting policy makes my financial statements more reliable and rele relevant, making them better presentation of financial statements. Whenever there is a change in accounting policy with respect to a change in statute or indices, apply transitional provisions given in the statute or indices. But if in case I am changing it due to the change in opinion of the management, then I have to give a retrospective application. What is retrospective application? The date on which such transaction first occurred should be the date on which I will start applying this change in accounting policy. If it is impractical, then at least give a retrospective application to a change in accounting policy from the beginning of the earliest period reported. Beginning of earliest period reported is nothing but the beginning of the previous year. Clear? This is the concept, a very important concept which deals with change in accounting policy and where we require to present three balance sheet dates instead of two balance sheet dates and which requires a restatement of the previous year. Restatement of PNL in the last year, restatement of cash flow statement in the last year, restatement of statement of changes in equity in the last year, and also requires the restatement of the balance sheet of the last year. And along with the last year's balance sheet, we'll also have to present the third balance sheet, which is at the beginning of the day, uh, which is the date of retrospective application of change in Indies. Clear?
Yes, guys, since we are done with accounting policies, let us go with errors. What is an error? Error results from an omission or a material error that occurred in the previous years. Let's say, for example, a material error occurred in the previous year. What do you do? I'll correct the error in the previous year itself. My correction of the error will occur in the previous year itself. Therefore, in the current year when I am presenting the comparatives, I will, I will compare current year with the restated or corrected previous year. After the error gets corrected, the previous year restated previous year figures should be presented as comparative. But let's say the error was not previous year, it was prior to the previous year. That means let's say today current year is 2020-21. My, uh, my previous year is what? 1920. Error occurred in 1920, then I will correct it in 1920 and I'll restate 1920 so that it is a comparable figure for 2020-21. But let's say error did not occur in 1920, error occurred in 2010-2011. Then what will happen? Then I'll have to rectify the error from the date on which the error first occurred. That means 2021 onwards. So 2020, sorry, 2011 onwards. So 2010-11, 11-12 get restated. 12, 13 gets restated, 13, 14 gets restated. Like that, I have to restate 10 financial years. Man, 10 financial years, impractical, sir. So what we'll do? If impractical, then rectify at the beginning of earliest period reported. The same way how you have applied for accounting policies, same way you will apply even for errors also. Instead of rectifying the error from the date on which the error actually occurred, since it is way too long back, 10 years, is already passed by i will rectify the error with respect to the beginning of the previous year beginning of previous year is again first april 2019 clear the effect of the error rectification of the error should be adjusted in my retained earnings very similar to what we have done in accounting policy whatever accounting policy is there is retrospectively applied from the beginning of the previous year and the cumulative effect of that application should be should be charge to retain earnings. Here also, rectification of an error, whatever happens at the beginning of the earliest period reported, that effect should be charged into my retained earnings. Clear? So even in the case of comparatives, I'm sorry, one second. So in this case also, as far as the comparative is concerned, current year should be compared with the restated previous year and also will be compared with the date on which the error is given effect to. So that means again three balance sheets should be given current year, previous year, beginning of previous year. So therefore, if I go with the same logic of what we have seen earlier, this will be the same case. Error occurred on 15th of August. 2010 on this day error occurred while closing your financial statements for the current year on 31st of March 2021 the error was identified so what can you do first way of doing it is rectify the error from the date on which actually it occurred. Like this, I can rectify error. Or, if this is not possible, what can I do? Or, I will rectify the error from the beginning of the pre earliest period reported. That means, my earliest period reported current year starting from 1st April 2020. Last year starting from 1st April 2019. So I will rectify the error from the beginning of earliest period reported. Beginning of earliest period reported. Clear? So this is exactly how it happens. So whenever we come across such kind of situations where the error has occurred or been identified, 
then you have to rectify the error from the date on which the error first occurred. If that is not possible, then I'll rectify the error from the date on which, uh, from the date of beginning of earliest period reported. In that case, my current year, which is 2010-11, sorry, 2020-21, which is the current year, has to be compared with 2000 or corrected after rectification. Corrected 2019-20 should be compared with this is the previous year should be compared with beginning of previous year 1st april 2019 as far as the balance sheet is concerned again three balance sheets should be prepared that 14 2019 is the date on which the error is rectified date on which error is rectified And whatever effect is there on 1st April 2019, effect of rectification of error should be transferred to retained earnings. The effect of rectification of error should be transferred to retained earnings. on 1st April 2019 clear this is the concept of errors and that will bring us to the end of this standard in days 8 where we talk about accounting policies accounting estimates and accounting errors